Ani, hey it's me, welcome back to my channel. Today as you can tell from the title, we are going to be making a long awaited request, ribbon pants. So ribbon pants have actually been requested of me several times over the years, both in the comments of my videos as well as in person, but I never took a stab at it because I know that your girl's not great at pants. And that's because I've made a few pairs of pants over the course of my I don't know, 20 some years of sewing, and I've always goofed them up. But about a year ago, I actually had to make a pair of shorts. So I loaded up ye old YouTube, found some tutorials, and figured out how to make these shorts. And it turned it out, turned it out. <laughs> and it turned out to be pretty easy, actually. And now here I am, I need to make a pair of ribbon pants for somebody who doesn't want to wear a skirt. And I thought, I know how to make those shorts. Why can't I use those same methods for making pants? So here we are today. I'm gonna to be showing you how to make ribbon pants or how I make ribbon pants. It's a really easy tutorial. There should be very little room for error. Um, anyway, let's, let's get started. So first thing that we need is some material for pants. I would suggest getting a lot of material depending on how tall you are. I think I got two yards for a child um, and that's because uh, our legs are long, so. And then I want you to find a pair of pants to use as a pattern. Again, this is for a child, so these are a pair of this child's pants. We're not gonna be making them exactly like this, all belled like that, um, but it'll serve as sort of a pattern piece that will help us cut out the shape that we need. And besides that, you need your typical sewing things, you know, scissors, measuring tape, and as well as uh, ribbon and waistband for the pants. So per Chelsea fashion, my intro is already long enough now, and I think we should just get going, shall we? <laughs> All right, so the first thing we wanna do is take our pattern piece pants here, and we want to fold them in half, making sure that the side seams of the legs match up. And then for the butt area, butt slash crotch area, making sure that the inseam is completely flared out. Um, and this seam right here should make this curve shape. Typically with pants, this seam right here, you'll have it be longer for the butt area than it would be for the crotch area. You can uh, optimize your pants to have you know different lengths right here but today we're just going to be making them the same. So there are actually two different ways that you can use these pants for a pattern piece. Um, the way that we're not going to be doing it today, I'll just show it to you real quick, is to sort of lay your pants down here, um, trace what you need, make sure you trace this line onto the fabric nicely, and then at this line that you trace, you'll carefully flip these pants over and then retrace on the other side so that it would create one entire shape and that's basically one pant leg. You'd have to do that twice um, and then attach those pant legs together. But today I actually want to work with the fold of the fabric and that's just because I find it easier to make sure that this area matches when I am able to cut it all at once. You'll see what that means in just a moment. Um, if we were to flip this, we'll be cutting this part or tracing it twice. We'll trace it over here and trace it over here. If we work with the fold, we only do that once and then when we cut it once, it will completely match. So <laughs> I don't know if that's um, absolutely necessary, but if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know I can be a little overly precise with things. So if you prefer to do the flip way, by all means, go for it. It's actually how I made my shorts last year, but um, today we're gonna be doing it differently. But first, as you can see, 
there's a lot of fabric over here that would be wasted if we work from the fold that is provided by the manufacturer when you, you know, take this fabric off of the bolt. So I'm actually going to take the fabric and refold it um, so that it's just wide enough for these pants. Now I am going to be making these pants just a little bit wider. So I guess, you know, let's say the fabric is this far out of my pants. Maybe I'll just come over here and pinch it. It's about this far outside of the other side of the pants. And that is where I'm going to create an entirely new fold to work with. It doesn't have to be precise. You don't need exact, you know, down to the centimeter how wide to do right here. Just enough that it's wider than the pants you want to cut out. Hello, hi. Apologies for the change angle. I realized I needed this thing over here and not on this side. But here we have our new fold created. Our fabric is folded. We have all the excess right here. And now we're going to take the pants and facing the, um, I'm going to call this the butt seam. Facing the butt seam away from the fold, we're going to line up this edge with the fold. In fact, I'm actually going to probably line it up just maybe about um, a half inch away. Uh, actually, I might do a little more. Let's do about an inch away from the fold. And that's because I want the pants to be just a little baggier than To make these pants wider we make them wider from the fold another way to make them wider is instead of cutting right along right here you would do that same shape that same swoop um, further out so you would cut you know you could start like right here and then come out this way you don't really want to make this swoop to like any longer or like go down anymore unless you want more high-waisted pants. Which brings me to my next point. We also need material at the top of the pants for the waistband. So I'm actually gonna move this down quite a bit. Just like a ribbon skirt, you'll want enough material at the top to be able to fold over down and stitch and create basically a tube the, to insert the waistband at. So instead of cutting the fabric right here, in order to have this uh, more high-waisted, I'm going to add a couple more inches on top of that. And then I need my waistband allowance. So I am going to be using, I think, a uh, one inch wide waistband. So I'm gonna add two inches at the top of that. Or if you are say making pants for um, like a larger bottom, then you might want the swoop to still be like this shape, but go out more so that it gives you more material here to uh, basically wrap around the butt. <laughs> If you are using a pair of pants that are stretchy and you're like, hey, I really like the way that these pants fit me when they conform to my body, how can I copy that fit onto this then while they are not stretched to my body? So you can hold this side and um, these ones aren't very stretchy though. And you can stretch this and wherever the uh, fabric ends up or the edge of the fabric ends up after you stretched it, that's the point where you can cut from. So now that I have sufficiently yapped away, 
let's get cutting. I'm actually gonna take this drafting ruler over to here and line it up with the folded edge so I can make sure that it's symmetrical or parallel with the actual fabric that you're cutting from. And here you don't have to be absolutely super duper precise, but um, having it at least within the right range will produce like the right um, waist height that you want, whether it's mid, high, low. And now for this side of the pants. So do not cut the fabric right up against the pants that you're using or else you're not gonna have any seam allowance and that will make your pants smaller than the ones that you're using. Um, so you'll wanna cut at least a half inch outside for seam allowance. And that's what I'm gonna do here. I am not being super particular with making sure it is exactly a half inch. If it's a little over, that's okay with me. I just don't want it under. So here is a closer look at the cut I just made. And then I'm gonna be doing almost the same thing from here. As you can see, I have bell bottoms, so I'm not gonna cut it to the shape of the bell bottoms. I'm just gonna cut it straight down. Um, but if you are, <laughs> if you are using pants that have a straight leg and they're not bell bottoms. Then similar to what we did up here is you'll cut a half inch at least outside of the edge of the pants. Here you see me measuring from the fold of the fabric to make sure that the pant leg is an even width all the way down. So I'm gonna bring you down to the hem of the pants now. So here is another place that you can make some alterations. We already worked on making the pants more high-waisted. Now you can determine how long you want the legs of your pants to be. I know these pants are probably right below this person's ankles and they're going to want them to be a little longer. And they're also a kid, they're going to grow. You know, depending on how much longer than the pants you're using, you want these to be. Um, you could add that amount, but also remember to add an inch to that amount for hem allowance so that you're able to, you know, hem your pants. Unless, of course, you want, say, like capris or ankle pants, then you can actually, you know, just cut these up a little higher to make your pants shorter. Just remember to give yourself that hem allowance. In cases where you're working with kids and they're going to grow and you want um, their pants to fit them longer and you feel confident, that the waist area is going to fit for a while width-wise, um, but you're worried about them still fitting lengthwise, you could add quite a bit at the bottom and hem it and then take it out as they grow taller. I'm not gonna be doing that though. I will say that is a nice way to give yourself security in case you're worried about accidentally making the pants too short. Leave yourself a little bit, hem it, and then if the wearer puts them on and goes, oh man, I could use another inch or two of this, then, you know, you have that. You just undo the hem and rehem it. So in this case, I think I want these pants to be an inch longer. Um, and then when I account for seam allowance, then that'll be uh, two inches longer. Um, since this fabric though is pretty light. I actually think I'm going to take the seam allowance down to one inch instead of a full inch, um, which is an option for you as well. You can either do one inch or a half inch. I don't plan on doing a rolled hem, which would require one inch. Um, I'm just going to roll it up. I'm going to serge it and then roll it up once. So I think I'm going to just have a half inch for seam allowance or for hem allowance, I mean, and then an extra inch just to elongate the pants. Here is our first pant leg. So 
instead of repeating the whole process that we just did, we're actually gonna use this as a pattern piece now. Um, partially because it sucks to repeat things when you don't need to. Also because you could make the other side not match. You want the pant legs to be, you know, the same shape and size. Um, so we're gonna take this and move it out of the way just for a moment, keeping it folded so it doesn't, um, so we can keep it orderly. And then we're gonna take this side and bring it back up here. So the reason in the beginning of the video that I told you to make sure you get a lot of fabric for this is because you're gonna be cutting the length of your pants twice along the fold. You basically need the uh, length of your fabric to be twice as long as you want your pants to be um, with the allowances included. And the pattern piece that we just cut for these pants, I actually didn't get enough fabric. It is too short enough. Because I'm making child size pants anyways, there is still a way. That's just with what was cut along this fold. There's still plenty of fabric right here. Um, shoot, it might even be wide enough up here. Let's see. I guess because it's a child size pair of pants, I didn't account for the fact that um, the fabric is probably wide enough to be able to cut a pant, two pant legs out of the width of the fabric. For adult size pants, this probably wouldn't fly because um, this fabric would not be wide enough to cut two full pant legs out of it. So when you're accounting for how much fabric you want to get for your pants, just make sure you get twice, at least twice the amount that you need um, for the length of your pants. Not just the length of your legs, but including the length of all of the allowances that you need, the waistband allowance and such. But it seems like this fold is gonna work all right, so using the pant leg that we just made and cut out, we will line this up with the fold as best as we can. Also, if your pants have any particular pattern to them, um, just make sure that it's facing the same way on both pieces. Oh man, it's on here. I know that you probably cannot tell. Um, it's like right boop, here. I realized because of how, I guess, silky this fabric is, it was kind of hard to get everything to stay lined up. So um, two things you can do if you want to avoid that is to pin the pattern piece before you move it around and then it slightly unfolds. I should have done that. Um, another way is instead of working on the fold, you could just completely um, unfold both the pattern piece here as well as unfolding this and just lay this one completely flat on top of the other one and you could cut over the whole uh, pattern piece. So now that I have this nicely laid out on here, um, I'm going to go ahead and cut this out following along the edge of the piece of pant that I just made. Sweet! Now we have both of them cut out. And... This would be joined together and would form the butt and the front. And then you have each pant leg coming off. So now that these are cut out, the thing I'm gonna do next is put some ribbon on them. And then I will show you how I construct the pants together. Hello, I'm back. So I have the ribbon sewn onto both pant legs. And now it's time to put the pants together. So of course we do things right sides together. I have the pant legs completely folded out. And I'm gonna take the other pant leg here 
and lay it on top. Um, and the front and back seams with that swoopy shape, we're going to be joining the swoop from one pant leg to the other. So matching these seams up, I'm gonna go ahead and throw a pin in it. And I'm gonna pin it all the way to the top. Once I pin it together, then I'm gonna sew the seam all the way up to the top and doing that on the other swoop seam as well. Now we have both of the front and back seams done, these swoop shaped ones. Next is doing the side seams. So I, I know it probably looks like you would want to sew down these sides, um, these two pieces of fabric together, but that would be a skirt. So in order to make two different pant legs, we're actually gonna separate these two pieces of fabric. You know, take one pant leg, toss it to the side. We're just gonna work with this one for now. And we're gonna be joining one side of the pant leg with the other side of the pant leg, of course, right sides together. So you're basically folding it back in half the way it was when we first cut it out, um, meeting up the corners of the hem, as well as the seams that we just sewed. So here's you know the back seam, here's the front seam, we're gonna meet these up together. Give them a good old pin and then join these um, two edges together all the way down. And then we'll do the same thing with this side. And then when it's time to sew, um, you could do one pant leg at a time if that makes you more comfortable. I'm just gonna start on this side and I'm gonna go all the way across to the other end. We have some almost done pants. I did go ahead and serge these. I highly suggest choosing some sort of fray blocking method to keep strings from, you know, fraying everywhere. Um, but the next step is to hem your pant legs. And I'm gonna be doing that by uh, folding this over a half an inch and stitching that down. And for the waist, I'm gonna be doing that very similarly, or basically exactly the way that you do with a ribbon skirt, where you go ahead and fold this down, and then you stitch a half inch away from the edge of this fabric here, and that will create a tube where you enter the waistband into, you know, leaving a gap open in that stitch so you can feed the waistband in. And once you have the waistband in there, then you close it up. So, those are some pretty straightforward steps. If you've made ribbon skirts before, you know what I'm talking about. We're just hemming and doing waistbands. And let's see the final product.